Today, let's talk about forgiveness. Mercy will be in the letter of James in chapter 2 and verse 13, continuing on. And it says here, I will start in verse 12, because it's halfway through the sentence where the verse breaks. <clears throat> Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Now, this is one of those verses that gets taken out of context. People say, see, mercy triumphs over judgment. Kind of like saying, okay, judgment gets stomped into the ground and thrown away, and no judgment at all, and therefore we can do whatever the bloom and well we please, and it's okay with God. That's not what it's saying here. Where does mercy actually triumph over judgment? Mercy triumphed over judgment at the cross. That is where mercy triumphed over judgment. We were enemies of God. We were in rebellion. We were everything bad you can think of. That applied to us. We were worthy of judgment. And we still are actually worthy of judgment in our own lives, in our own deeds, in how we live. At the cross, Jesus intervened and said, because you cannot help yourself, you cannot get yourself up out of that state of condemnation. I myself will rescue you. And that is the mercy that triumphs over judgment. And yet here, James is talking about our attitude to others. Speak and act. Does that mean that we are to speak and act and say, okay, those people who are um, doing thus and so, and I'm not going to name the groups, come on. Everybody's got their own favorite who's bad. And, and I'm not going to get into that. Does that mean we are to say of those those groups, well, it's okay that they're doing that. No. It means to say, to be having the same viewpoint that Jesus had, which is how can they be rescued from that? And it's not a blanket thing. Now, there are those who try to make it blanket. It's called universalism. Well, once the cross happened, everybody's okay no matter what you do you're going to get saved and that's fine so it doesn't matter what you do so you can be mean nasty evil to little helpless children and it's okay i think we all know that's not okay what does it mean then It says that mercy, that judgment without mercy will be shown to. So there still is a judgment without mercy. There still is judgment. Well, who will this judgment without mercy be shown to? Is this the unforgivable sin? I did a series just recently about the unforgivable sin. You can go look at that. And this is not the specific unforgivable sin it's talking about there. This is talking about an unredeemed attitude. You know, we, we say, what do you need to do to be saved? And one of the things that's there in several places, it says, unless you repent, you will all perish. And that's repeated. You, you know, it's not like I'm building it on one little verse. It's repeated enough times that repentance is needed. And what is repentance? We tend to think of repentance kind of like the allocution when you get a, do a plea bargain, you know? You go into court and you say, well, I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this. And you list all the things that you got caught at, really. And you say, yeah, I did it. You got me. 
That's not repentance. That's not what it's talking about. The word means to turn around and change your mind. To turn, to have a different mind is what it means. And so as we have a different mind, that is necessary for salvation, it says. But it's not like we can utterly make all those changes in our mind ourselves. But it means that we choose to say, I have a different attitude about it. I'm guilty. I'm utterly, totally guilty. And I see that my only hope is the mercy that God showed in Christ Jesus at the cross. That's my only hope. It is that attitude change that is necessary for salvation. There are those who try to say, who make a big deal about, you have to do this thing, this thing, this thing. See, there's a verse here that says you have to do this. There's a verse here that says you have to do this. A verse here that says you have to do this. They even argue about the order in which you have to do them. And then there's others that say, no, it's not that. You simply have to make assent to this one logical historical fact and say, God, I accept this one logical historical fact. Oh, no, no, no. You have to accept these two facts, one about history, one about yourself. No, no, no. You have to accept these three facts and assent to these three facts and say, God, I assent to these three facts, one about history, one about myself, and one about you. That all puts the burden on us, and it becomes a work salvation. No, salvation is only found in repentance, which is where we see and acknowledge and realize we are hopeless in our condition and only God can save us. And those of us who realize, when we have realized that level of depravity in ourselves and mercy on the part of God, we will, of course, have an attitude of mercy to others. That is what James is calling us to.